Hello and welcome to Social Wednesday with Evolutes. This is our 22nd episode and today's guest is Chuck Harold. Chuck is an on-air host at securityguidetv.com and the SAS Security Management Highlights podcast where he has over 2,500 shows. Chuck has also 30 years experience as a licensed private investigator and a 13 year career as a police officer in three Southern California agencies. So thank you, Chuck, for being here. Thanks for having me. I don't often get interviewed, so I'm really excited about this. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> So Social Wednesday is a series where our guests play a game of 12 questions and have less than 10 seconds to answer. Chuck has not seen the questions before and this is not rehearsed. So are you ready? No, but I'm going to give it a try because I don't speak in 10 seconds. I speak like in 10 minutes every answer, but I'm going to give it a shot. It's Perfect. a big challenge for me. I'm ready. Go ahead. Okay. So question one, describe yourself in three words. Uh, fun, happy, and informed. Okay. That was less than 10 seconds. You're, you're All right, good. I'm winner, 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 chicken dinner. All right. <laughs> Question two. Where do you see yourself in five years? Oh, well, probably uh, expanding my show. I want to I hit uh, 5,000 shows. Wow, that's amazing. What is your favorite color? Well, it's green. Green? Why? Uh, it's the most prominent color in nature, and the human eye can see more green than any other color, and I have green eyes. And I'm Irish. And, and you're Irish. So, <laughs> the lucky color. <laughs> Question four. What is your biggest accomplishment? Oh, boy. I don't have that answer. Can I come back to that answer? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't. <laughs> what comes oh, I first? My biggest accomplishment would probably be that I'm able to reinvent myself. So I've reinvented my career four or five times from police officers, studio security executive, private investigator, and now a TV host. Question five. What is your ideal vacation location? It's where I live in Apache Junction, Arizona. I have the Tonto National Forest. I have hiking, boating, fishing, camping, uh, outdoor ranges. Uh, it's, I just love the desert. It's a beautiful place. I've never been, so I hope that one day I'll be able to visit. Well, the Hacienda Herald is always open and welcome. Perfect. I'll keep that in mind. All right. <laughs> okay, so question six. What is one tip you can give someone that is camera shy? I didn't hear the first part. What? What is? What is one tip you can give someone that is camera shy? You have to be yourself. If you came to speak to me in person, and I speak just like this, I... I don't have an on-air personality or an off-air personality. And that is the most important thing, be yourself. That's what you told me in 2018 when we met. At Jersey. It is what I told you, and you're doing that now on the show, aren't you? And it works, right? Yes. So thank you <laughs> for that good advice. <laughs> well, I remember you, were, you wanted to read some answers, and I said, no, let's throw those out and do it. And now you're doing it this way, and it works. Yes. Congratulations. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. <laughs> All right. So question seven. How did you get involved with the security industry? Well, like most people, I was a police officer. I, I retired. I got injured, retired. I went to work for a part-time studio security job doing, you know, an off-duty protection. And I filled out an application and I got lucky and got hired by Fox. And that started my uh, studio, well, started my security career in general. I liked how you mentioned, like most uh, started in policing. I'm like one uh, of the few anomalies now in the past five years that start with an academia and then get into the security industry. Well, that model is changing and I congratulate you for that. We need more of that. Uh, the old security police model, it works to some degree because police do know people. We know behavior, right? And that's important. The IT guys know computers. But some of the smartest and, and most informed people I know have taken the academia route. And I wholeheartedly encourage people to combine any of those sort of disciplines of police and IT into academia. And it's, it's a powerful combination. Question eight. What is one piece of advice that you can give me? All right, you're already, doing, you're already doing the first thing. So congratulations, you're being yourself. And that's super important to be authentic. The next thing I would shoot for is don't worry about how many likes you get and how many people follow and all that kind of nonsense. Go for quality. Because if you have the quality, you're going to get the following. Absolutely. I totally agree with that. I advise that to my clients as well. Like it's the consistency that matters most. That's right. Idea. Okay. Thank you, Chuck. <laughs> Question nine. What is one thing that we might not know about you? 
I was a childhood actor, not a very big one. I did some Pop-Tarts commercials. I did a movie called Busting with Ellie Gould and Robert Blake. And in the very opening scene, I was in the dentist's office, just a bit part. And I did that uh, between the ages of probably 10 and 12 years old. That's awesome. You should totally post that on LinkedIn and be like, well, look at my start. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Question 10. What is your favorite memory? It can be professionally or personally. Oh boy, that's a stumper there. Mm. I'm gonna have to think about that. You're gonna have to edit this one so I can get to 10 seconds. Oh, uh, I'm gonna edit. <laughs> We're not <laughs> here. Uh, let's see. My best memory. Wow, professionally or personally? Ooh, that is a tough one. <laughs> All right, I got it. I got it. All right, I got it. This, this popped into my head, so we're going to go with it. All okay. Right. Now, I don't know why this popped into my head, but I'm going to go with it. I'm a rookie cop. I'm at San Gabriel PD. I'm on the range with the chief of police and the sergeant. I'm doing qualifications. I'm shooting. He says, your shotgun's too low. Raise it up. I said, no, sir, it's fine. He says, raise it up. And I shot out and blew up the entire brand new range air conditioning system. My very first day as a rookie. <laughs> I thought my career was over. Good thing it was not someone. <laughs> That's true. That's <laughs> it a very bad day. <laughs> but I followed directions and, the, and the, the sergeant was all mad because I shut up the air conditioner and I said, my training officer will tell you that you ordered me to raise my shotgun. I kind of started the tone for my career going forward for 15 years of not agreeing with management all the time. <laughs> I'm sure you made an impression. <laughs> <laughs> Question 11. Do you have any pets? I do. I have Roscoe the Wonder Dog, uh, who is a mutt of some kind. We got him at the pound for a couple of dollars and rescued him. And uh, he's a talker. Talker. <laughs> That's all day long. He sounds like he's talking to you. It's really kind of funny. He's a great dog. Is it a big dog? No, he's about 40 pounds. He's red with a kind of yellow eyes. Um, really not sure what kind of dog he is. We have a shepherd and a chow or a golden retriever or something. Uh, but. Uh, I usually get my dogs from uh, the pound because I, I just find they, first of all, I want to save dogs. That's a great thing. And they just uh, have really cool personalities. So we're very lucky to have them. Yeah, I'm a 100% I'm a dog person, so I admire you for that. Oh, I love it. I want an Irish wolfhound, but somebody that lives here will not let me have one. Maybe one day. Of course, they're seven feet tall. It could be why she doesn't want me to have one. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's going to be like having someone else living with you. That's right. Yeah. And last but not least, are ready to the 12th question. What is your favorite movie genre? Oh, you know what? All movies. There's not a movie that I won't sit down and watch, and I don't care what the genre is. I just love movies, especially going to movie theaters. That's the best experience for me. Well, thank you so much for playing. What did you think of the game in questions? I like it. Uh, I am not used to being interviewed, and I think I do a terrible interview, by the way. Uh, and I'm not sure why. I'm good at asking questions, but that's what I did in police work. I grew up learning how to speak to people, ask them questions, interrogate them. That part I'm good at. But me answering questions? No. <laughs> I'm not really you great at that. Fantastic. You did fantastic. I hope I did. Thank you very much. And before we do end the episode, you have mentioned to me that you believe that there is no such thing as physical and cybersecurity and how this belief has caused the industry some problems. So please tell us. Yeah, more. this this is something that I've been um, upset about since I got my first computer in 1984, right? Before you were born, I had a computer. It had two floppy drives. Hard drives were not even invented. The computer cost me $2,500 and you could play Frogger and had uh, Quicken for DOS and a couple of things. And I took it to the police station and I showed the chief that I could write reports on it. And he said, get that out of here. We don't need computers and police work. And what has happened over the years is I remember the year was 1997 or 98. I was at the studios. I was typing in Yahoo search because Google wasn't around and I'm searching for security companies. And when you typed in security, all the major security companies came up. By the year 2000, if you typed in the word security, you didn't find the guard companies, you found cyber security companies. Cyber security took over the word security. Now you have to type the word physical security to find allied universal protection, right? Or something like that. This is a problem. Physical security people have thought 
They didn't have to worry about cybersecurity. That's the IT guy's problem. But, but the IT guy doesn't understand human behavior, right? So they went off and did their own thing and made up all these vocabulary and words for themselves so they could understand it. And the physical security people didn't understand the vocabulary, so they stayed away. Now we're talking about convergence. People think they're geniuses saying, oh, we're going to talk about convergence. We're going to put physical and cybersecurity together. If you weren't putting physical and cybersecurity together when you got your first BlackBerry, you don't know what you're talking about, okay? Because the day you had your BlackBerry, you knew that there's physical security and cybersecurity is the same thing. A bad guy has to sit at a keyboard and type in a command to send out ransomware, doesn't he? That's a physical security issue. And if we were paying more attention to the bad guys in cyber as physical security people to find them and look for them and, and guard against them, the IT guys wouldn't be bombarded with the bar barbarians at the gate and 1 billion attacks on the networks every day, right? People are coming around, they're working together more closely. Uh, CSOs and CISOs are kind of getting together and, and, and sharing ideas. But you know what? That's an idea that should happen 20 years ago. And for now, for people to say, oh, we're converging now and it's all going to work, might be too late. Personal opinion. Remember, I've had a computer since 1984, before most people were born in the security industry. So I have a progression of this and, and where it's come from and where it's gone and where we are. And there's a very big danger in us doing things like having the grid go down, uh, you know, that kind of thing, because we're not working as closely as we should. And if we got rid of the word physical security and cybersecurity, just called it security, we'd have a different mindset and uh, we'd be much more successful at it. Interesting. I've never actually heard that perspective before. I, I probably say a lot of things people haven't heard, which is why I'm always not popular, but I say it like it is. <laughs> and I think to add on to your point as well, I would argue that adding an emergency management and business continuity planning into that mix would help a lot with um, growing the security industry. Why do you think it uh, it waxed and waned a little bit? It's so much easier to do now. I wonder what the, uh, the lack of motivation is. It's when it's not uh, crazy and immediate and needing response immediately. Yeah, that's true. People get comfortable. Yeah. yeah it's comfort. Comfort is dangerous. That's right. Complacency. Complacency is death. Wow, this took a very dramatic turn. <laughs> well, it, it did, but I mean, that's kind of what, uh, in the end, what are we trying to do in security? We're trying to protect people. So uh, not to put a big damper on your show, but that is kind of what we're trying to do is make people safe. So if you don't call it like it is and define it for what you're trying to do, people won't buy it, right? So I think you're doing a great job and I, I like this approach. I like your format. I think it's really interesting. And uh, I hope I, I made you proud and wasn't an embarrassing guest. No, you are not. I am concluding episode 22 of Social Wednesday with Evolutes. Stay tuned for the next episode. And in the meantime, if you have any questions that you'd like to ask your next guest or even recommend a guest for, our, for the series, comment below. Thanks again for watching and see you in two weeks. Thank you. And that's it. Thanks, Susanna. Thank you. All right. <laughs>